Interview and job search strategies that work. Recently, one of my relatives asked, asked me how to get a job overseas. You know, what do I need to do, right? And, you know, I was obviously asked, well, do you, because I didn't know, do you have a degree? No, you don't. Okay, well, that leaves out some jobs, right? Because some companies overseas want you to have a degree. What other uh, skill sets do you have? IT. So I said, okay, well, let, that's a good start. Okay. Um, so I suggested um, that they get a job in the Middle East, like Qatar or UAE, maybe Kuwait, one of those three, uh, even Germany. And I lean more towards actually, more, more towards the Middle East than anywhere else. And, um, and I'll, I'll just give you, a, the audience, the advice I gave. So it's like this. Middle East, it's, um, it's not easy to get there, uh, but it's not hard either. It, the, if you take your hand, wherever you are now, take your hand, your, your two hands, and, and just um, make, make them wide. You know, I don't know, three feet apart, two feet apart, something like that. Just take your hands and two feet apart. And that's your competition, essentially, right now, wherever you're at. That's your competition. So you you represent in between your two hands. The, you know you're in there somewhere, right? So in the Middle East, you take your hands and you you move them to, together closer, maybe a foot apart at the most, maybe six inches apart, right? That's your competition overseas right now, by the way. The reason is because a lot of people don't know um, what they don't know. They you know, they read the news and, you know, of course, right, and TV and all that, and that they think that's how it is everywhere completely, which is not factual, um, that, you know, but, like, again, there, I mean, there are uh, places like that, but, you know, for the most part, um, you know, it, it, it's anywhere, really, you know, but uh, for that, that's one. The second one is the, the entry barrier, so they're thinking, okay, um, I'm going to go over there and make $300,000, right, a year or whatever. That's not the case anymore. That was back in the day. I mean, you could make probably like $200,000 way back in the day. But nowadays, it's it's not like that anymore. And uh, so the other thing is, uh, so they're like, okay, well, they're going to see a job. And it's going to pay like maybe 80000 a year, let's say, right? And they say, oh, I'm not even going to bother with that because that's not enough, you know. Uh, for me to go over there. And now, what what they probably don't get is this: when you when you live overseas, everything is your housing is paid for, all that, right? Typically, it's it's paid for. Also, you're you're tax free up to like ninety thousand or ninety five. Well, I don't know what it is now nowadays, but you're tax free. Meaning, so so just to clarify that, right? Let's say you get there September 1st of this year, or let's say September 1st, right? You get in overseas. Okay. So that, your year starts that date. As long as you don't come back into the States and, and live more than 35 days, so you have to be out of the States at least 300 and, so 365 less 35 days. You can only be in the States... 30, 35 days or less um, for your uh, your um, exempt status, basically for that tax, that that money. So it's, let's say it's ninety thousand, right? September first, you go there, you make ninety k, and you come back September, I don't know, fifth or whatever, something like that, of the next year. As long as you didn't come, as long as you did, you weren't in the states. Uh, for more than 35 days in that year, then that is considered tax uh, tax free. Um, the other, and so if you think about this, right, uh, your your pool of people, right, that are overseas now, a lot of them are over there for five, ten plus years already. Some of them longer than that, because they, you know, they like the lifestyle, they want to live there, etc. So what, what, a, what a recruiter's looking for is this. 
uh, an open mind. So your willingness to actually want to go there, that's the, that's, the, that's the very first step right there. Very first step is you have a willingness to want to go there. I want to go there. I want to work there, right? The second thing is the skill set. And, of course, you know, I'm going to talk about IT, right? You know, because I'm IT myself. So I said IT, you know. Okay, now IT. Let's talk about IT a little bit, right? So the folks here in uh, the States, um, a lot of IT people here don't, you know, they, they don't want to go overseas or they don't, and they don't have a, a cert, they don't have certifications, you know, and they just don't have a willingness to go, right? So use that for your benefit, exactly. So what certifications do they need over there? Well, I'll tell you which ones they need. You can have the Security Plus, like, now, mind you, I'm talking about government contracts, by the way. I'm not talking about the civilian sector. Uh, when I talk about overseas, I just want to clarify that one. So how do you get a job overseas as a government contractor, right? You need a Security Plus in IT. You gotta have a Security Plus no matter what, right? Um, so here's a simple solution, right? Like I've seen a lot of people, there's actually people I know who are, their company told them they need to get the Security Plus or they won't have a job. So what do they do? They go out and buy a book. You know, I, I actually saw the book. I said, okay, you know, interesting. Um, and that's the wrong way to do it. <laughs> I, if I may humbly say that to everyone listening, that's definitely the wrong way to do it. Because the, the companies overseas, they just, they're just looking to check a box, you know? When you have a security plus, you're checking a box for them. Oh, qualified. Okay, good. Okay. You know, now your competition is less because the other person who has more experience than you, let, let's just give us, you know, a hypothetical, right? So help desk, help desk administrator, right? Help desk administrator overseas. Let's say Qatar, for instance, right? Um, okay, let's do that. So here in the States, a help desk is like uh, 15, $15 an hour, maybe 15 to say 20, right? $20 an hour, what is that? So high end is like 40K, right? Um, that's here. And overseas, say Qatar, that's probably like $60,000 or you know, maybe $65,000 a year. And you work in 40 hours a week, I think, roughly. Um, you, you have your own uh, apartment, basically, the company pays for you. You have access to a company car. You don't necessarily have your own car, but you have access to the company car. Um, and, you know, you have access, of course, to uh, whatever base you work on, you know, uh, at the time. And so the company's like, okay, a uh, help desk person who has five years experience, help desk in the States, um, they, no security plus. Help desk person in the States has six months experience, help desk, but they have a security plus. One thousand percent they're going to take the person who has security plus one thousand percent because they check a box done okay don't have to worry about that right done the other th the other thing to consider is um uh clearance so you need a clearance to a lot of times you need a clearance to work over overseas so now maybe i've piqued your interest a little bit and you want to know more about this right so you're thinking well how how do i get a job what do I do? You know, come on. I need you to tell me how I need to get these jobs, right? So a couple of different websites to, uh, I recommend myself, right, to everybody, is, um, uh, let's see, clearancejobs.com. That's one. Um, militaryhire.com. Um, of course, dice.com. Um, let's see, monster.com, careerbuilderwrite.com. Career Jet. That's another one. I don't know if you guys know that or not, but Career. I said Monster, right? Monster.com. Yeah. Careerjet.com. So Careerjet.com. It's one of those search engines for other job sites everywhere. And uh, so what I what I do uh, if I'm looking for a job overseas, for instance, right? Is I, I I look at the job. I usually search by country, right? 
And then I do keyword like Security Plus, Sec Plus, right? Or I just do like a Microsoft or something like that. And um, and then I'll just kind of um, use find LinkedIn. I go find who the, the co- I find who the company is first of all, right? And then I try to find uh, try to try to find some recruiters who work for the company, so I can start ch- chatting with them a little bit. Middle East, in general, like Dubai, Qatar, Kuwait, um, Lebanon, right? Uh, what Turkey? Um, you know. Oman, Yemen, Saudi Arabia, right? Egypt. All of them have McDonald's, um, Dairy Queen, Wendy's, all that stuff. Shops, you know, malls, everything, right? So there's no big deal for that one deal. Uh, but what you're looking, what you're looking for, what what I look for is what what's the what's the cost of living? Like if I'm living off base, how much am I going to pay? Um, what's the salary? You know, what's the salary like? By the way, right? And, and what, what also the strategy is this, right? It's, it could also be a different strategy. So, you know, to, to go over there, you're going to go, yeah, relatively to other people over there. You're going to go lower pay. You're going to go over there for lower pay than other people. So you might go over there $60,000, right, for a help desk when maybe other people over there who are help desk make 70000 right? And... You don't care about that. You're just doing, you know, you're just figuring out you for, for your deal, not them. And so you go over there with kind of the mindset of making yourself better to come back overseas. I mean, to come back to the States at a, at a, at a higher job. So that means, for instance, like getting another certification, maybe even staying there and getting another job, some you know, in an, another company um, or getting a like so you may go from help desk to sysadmin um to you know um senior sysadmin you could do that there i mean really you could because you know you're over think about this right you're overseas you work for a company already they know who you are um okay so you get a bunch you get some certs and okay this job comes open right as a systems admin let's say and it makes like 80k, you know. Oh, okay, you made 60. Now you're making 80. Because they're gonna most likely gonna hire you. Because what what happens is they don't have to come back to anybody from the state side and say, "Hey, we're we're looking for somebody." You know, do you guys want anything? And and the chances are a sysadmin in the states is gonna want more money anyway uh, than 80k. And so you know you're that's the. That's the benefit of going overseas and staying overseas for more than one year. Also, a lot of people probably want. Well, I don't know if because uh, I, I told my I told my relative I said, okay, when you go overseas, you can travel anywhere. Like uh, for instance, you're in Qatar, right? So from Qatar, it's twelve. I think it's twelve hours from from Atlanta. I think right uh, to Qatar, Doha, Qatar, Qatar, and. From Doha, it's like an hour's ride, hour's plane ride to Dubai, UAE, right? And you guys probably know Dubai, how uh, on the news, it's the world's largest uh, building. I think it's the Burj Dubai or Burj Arab, one of those two. Yeah, I think it's Burj Al Arab, I think it is. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. At any rate, um, nevertheless, oh, no, that's, that's the hotel. I think it's the Burj Dubai. I think it's the Burj Dubai, yeah, right. So anyway, um, you know, they have fancy cars, of course, Porsches, Lamborghinis, Bentleys, Maserati, Bucati, all that, you know, everything, right? And because uh, <laughs> Dubai is a hub, by the way. You know, it, 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 Dubai is like the New York of, uh, it's the second New York, right? Or the, the second Hong Kong, basically, right? Um, and... Um, Everybody goes to Dubai, by the way. I mean, you know, uh, if you're worried about alcohol, uh, consuming alcohol, right? No, no, there are countries in the area they don't have alcohol. You can get alcohol in Bahrain, Qatar, UAE. Um, that's, yeah, pretty much it, right? Um, now, let's see, Qatar. So Qatar, from Qatar, it's like, what is it, two? I think it's two hours. I, I want to say it's like two hours. 
or four hours, I forget. But when I went uh, from uh, Qatar, I went to Bombay. So I forget how long it was, but it's only, it's a short distance, right, by the way, to uh, Bombay, to Delhi, uh, to Maldives Islands, right, to Sri Lanka, if you want to go to Sri Lanka, um, to Thailand, if you want to go to Thailand, uh, if you want to go to the Philippines, Singapore. It's, you know, literally like, you know, five or six hours max, right, to those locations. Um, and, and why do I, why, I, I, might, I might tell you, though, right, about India a little bit, right? So, the, the reason, so India, why, why I went to India, right? So, to get certifications, this kind of leads into this whole thing here. Um, India is actually a lot, like, when I say a lot, I mean, like, way, way, way cheaper, to take your um, to take your your IT training basically right if you say for instance uh, you go to Qatar you want to help desk right you want sysadmin but you, you know you're not a you're not a person who can self study for any reason right let's say right so um, you can go to Delhi you can go to Koenig Solutions I've been there um, and and that's kind of, and that's costly by the way they're costlier um, they put you up in a hotel right um, in Delhi there. And that, I, th- I don't know how much that is, but you can look on the, I'll, I'll put the website on the show notes, by the way. Um, and, and comparable to that, to like CED Solutions in uh, Atlanta. So there, I think, I'll put a website there, uh, a link to their uh, training as well. So roughly like, I know like CCNA, for instance, right? Cisco Certified Network Associate. In, uh, in, in CED Solution, I think it's like, 2,000, 3,000, something like that, and it's a week long. In Koenig, it might be 1,000, I think, um, or 2,000. Uh, I think it's 1,000, right? Now, in, in, in Bombay, and there's many places in Bombay, by the way, um, it's probably like $600, $800, something like that. Um, and these are, you know, th- those, it's because they cater to um, Indian people. You know, that's why it's a lot, lot less. You don't get the certification, you just get the knowledge, right? And, um, of course, it's in English, right? Indian people can speak English. Don't, you know, don't think for a second that they can't. Um, their accent's not that heavy. I don't know why people say that. It's not that, not that heavy at all to me, anyway. I mean, I'm, I'm fine. I mean, uh, and um, the training's good, by the way. I mean, they know what they're talking about. And, it's, you know, I, I say IT certifications, you know... If you if you're a uh, if you're a nurse in, in a foreign country and you try to come to the states and uh, practice nursing or do nursing work or whatever, um, there's a chance that they might not accept your credentials from wherever it's at. You know, whatever hospital or I'm sorry, whatever college it was at, they may want you to take some more classes or training. Right now, that's not the case with IT. If you're a CCNA in in uh, Qatar, and, and, you know, and you're a CCNA in the U.S., same CCNA, no different. Same knowledge, same certification is valid, you know, around the world. Doesn't matter. Um, the cost, I think, is the same, too, for that. So let's let's get into cost about a Security Plus now that i talked about it, right? And um, it's about $315 for the test. And it's, um, what, 100 questions, right? And... And so in, instead of getting the book, you know, and doing that and like, you know, uh, reading the book and, and all that, right? Look, look, we're just, this is just about getting a job, by the way. You can learn that stuff later on, by the way. Just get the test and pass it. Doesn't matter, right? Um, take, you know, plan on failing your first time. That's just so much easier, right? Get it out of your way. $315. That's a lot of money, I know. But, you know, if you, if you, what I find is if I overstudy for something, like, oh, I need to study, 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 and then I, I you know, I'm waiting till I'm ready, I'm, I'm, it's going to take me a lot longer, you know, to, to do it rather than just, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get the pass for sure dump, right? You can go to passforsure.com and you can buy a dump for like a hundred and some odd dollars. And it's like a pool of questions, basically, right? And then you go and you just, study those questions, memorize them, whatever, uh, and then you go take the test. So you're out like 
first time in, you're out what? $315 plus $150, right? Let's say, right? Uh, your first time taking it. Uh, and you can do that within like a week, easily within a week. And, um, and then, okay, now, then maybe you study the questions even more. Um, or you try to f- find a, a free version of the book if that's what you want to do, and then take it again. Uh, and then most likely you'll pass it, right? Um, so that's that's the case. That's to get that's to get a job because that's your that's your entry point to get into a, a job, a government contract job overseas. Um, and you know, the companies don't mandate that. A company like uh, whoever doesn't say I need you to have a cert. The government, the U.S. government says no. You need to have those people have that cert. Um, I, I got. To, I'll tell you. For example, I know a company um, that had 30 people that had a CCNA. They had a CCNA, um, and they had, you know, they worked in this, you know, networking type of job, right, as a network admin, basically. 30 people. The company said, told them, hey, you guys got six months to get a Security Plus, um, you know, or we're going to have to, you're going to have to look for another job. And people are like, oh, yeah. And I, I mean, I know some of these people. That's just why I'm saying this. Yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. Yeah, sure. So, um, okay, time came, right? They didn't have Security Plus. Guess what happened? You know, the ones that did not have Security Plus, get out. Now, these are people who knew the environment, by the way. They knew the environment. They'd worked there several years. They know the ins and outs. Um, they know the keys of the kingdom, basically. They know how everything works. They're very valuable, right? And, I mean, they have a certification, CCNA, but they don't have that elusive Security Plus. What does the company do? Bye. See you later. So that actually, yeah, that's just one example, by the way. And uh, that was stateside. That wasn't uh, overseas. And uh, the, good, the good part is, like, um, take advantage of your opportunity and, and, and your, when you have it. Be prepared for your next, your next job. You know, um, when you're overseas, you're, of course, you work for a company, it's different, you don't, you can't work for another company, or you can't work for another, um, another place, basically, because you have a visa, right, for that particular country, so you have a, a work visa for that, so that is the downside, whereas in the States, you can work two or three jobs if you wanted to, right, a weekend gig or a side hustle, um, the, the, the unique thing is, though, you know, over there, so I'll, I'll just tell you this, right? If you imagine a, um, your knowledge is like this. When you work for the government, here's your knowledge. This is why it's hard for a lot of uh, people who are in the military to come in the civilian world. Um, and it's, this is the reason why. So it's, it's very wide, that your knowledge is very wide because they expect you to do a lot of stuff. And it's kind of like OJT, hey, you're going to learn this. I'm going to teach you this. You know, everybody teaches one another uh, for the most part. So your knowledge is very wide, but it's not very deep. So you may know Active Directory a little bit, but you don't know the full scope or, or, or whatnot. And uh, the same thing for, so now, conversely, in the commercial sector or the states, let's say, right? So in the states, they expect you to know a shallow amount, of, um, a shallow um, one piece of knowledge basically but you have you should know a lot of it a lot of that right and so uh, that's what a lot of companies are looking for in, in the states um and it's unfortunate because you know here you are you know all these things but uh they want you to be uh specialized in a certain in a certain area which is not always the case i always i always um tell people you know what what is going to happen is you on your resume you know a lot of stuff but just go ahead and, and only tell the small amount of, of knowledge that you, that you know about. That way they don't ask you. Because what happens is if you know all these things, you know a little bit about a lot of things, they, um, what, what they do is they critique you on it. They literally, okay, critique you on your knowledge versus you just put a little bit of stuff on your resume um, and it's very specific to the job and they're just going to talk to you about that. I've, I've tried both. I've had success with both, right? Um, but... At any rate, that's, that's the key. The good part about when you're overseas, 
they 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 expect you to do things, but they know it's 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 a slow pace. It's slower. So I would say when you're when you're overseas, your knowledge level is probably I, I'd say you know one to three, uh, maybe one to two years behind um, the state side, the commercial environment, right? Because they move so slowly and they're it's not as fluid. It's not as fast as what you would expect uh, from some companies. You know they because it's all you know the government is the one buying the stuff right and um if it's not broken they're not going to they're not going to fix it so they're not going to spend the money and and all those things and typically the companies overseas they don't really um they give you like what they their you know their can training from their corporate or whatnot. so usually what they do is they overbuy or overpay for um training that's probably not even related to what you're doing or it's so, you know, one of their, it's more geared for the stateside people. They want to meet a quota basically, or they've purchased this training that they can write off or whatever, but it's not specific to what you're doing or it's so general. Um, if you're, if you're a uh, learn from a book, then that's perfect for you. But if you're a hands-on type person, definitely uh, being overseas is, is something because again, you can go to these other countries and learn or you can just, uh, you're not doing anything anyway. You're overseas, you're in Qatar, let's say, it's a weekend. You're not going anywhere anyway. Uh, you don't have a second job. Maybe you're just like with, the, with your thoughts or whatever. Um, you know, you, your internet and you just like learn. And it's basically just a, a chance for you to, to, to teach yourself, right, essentially. And the thing about overseas is everybody's a family over there. So a lot of the things that happen uh in the states don't happen over there you know everybody is really um close together um so the likelihood is your coworkers want to teach you or you want to teach each other or you want to train or you want to um get better in, in a certain field so that's the that is the benefit of working overseas so in the show notes i'm going to put a couple like I said urls uh websites whatnot to how, how to get it how to get a job um, or not how to get a job, but, but you can search for um, jobs overseas. So I thank everybody for listening to this podcast and have a great day.